close time on and we're underway with what should be a very exciting game. Bitterly cold conditions in Canberra, temperature about five degrees. And somebody suggested that it might snow. Too Thank cold you. To snow. <laughs> we hope you enjoy this game because it should be a beauty. Canterbury in possession with Alchin just about 12 metres out from his own line. In fact, pushed back to the 10 metre mark. Mortimer. Caught by Big Sam Bacco. Now Thomas. Back for Farah. Over Ferguson's head. Did well to get to it before it crossed the line. Now Ferguson's got Belcher with him. Well, McCullum's calling somebody out here for caution, but very importantly, Canterbury were down there in big numbers following the kick. Yes, Langmack's the man that was penalised there. He came in late with a swinging arm on Ferguson. I don't know that he could have got to Ferguson. I think there were too many other Canterbury players there. He probably gave one of his own players a bit of a whack, but it's a penalty to Canberra. And certainly uh, plenty of enthusiasm at the start here for Canterbury as Canberra fine touch. Walters will take the restart. Gives it away to Lazarus. Oh, heavy stuff in on Lazarus. Stephen Folks there to make the tackle. Here comes Bacco. He's gone without it. Anybody's ball. Scramble for possession. Canterbury will come up with it. Penalty's gone to the Bulldogs. What are you feeling in this game? Yes, I think you'll find there was an extra marker there. There were three of them all in a, uh, a row. But here's Bacco knocking on. Uh, the ball went forward. It's fallen on by Thorne, the uh, Canterbury Bankstown winger. But uh, from the play of the ball, there's a bit of push and shove. Nothing dramatic, but uh, shows the tension that's going on in this game. Gillespie, the Canterbury player involved in that scuffle. Now here come the Bulldogs with Dunn taking it up. 30 metres out from the uh, Canberra line. Penalty's gone to the Bulldogs again. It's Canberra offside. Scoring opportunity. Well, Tunks has wisely suggested they go for goal here. Terry Lamb will come up and take the kick. It's only a metre out and about 12 metres off centre. I don't know about the breeze, Billy Anderson. That's going to play a part in the kick. Well, there's not a great deal of breeze, Rex. What there is is in favour of Canberra. It's, for, it's in, from the southwest, but there's not enough to affect this goal kick. Well, that's a wind sock. We can gauge uh, the wind conditions ourselves, Rex. Yeah, but where's north? <laughs> that's the worry. <laughs> I know the moss grows on the sub side of a gum tree in the countryside, but I don't know which side I'm standing. Yeah, I think uh, the South Pole is in our direction. <laughs> it's not it's pretty close, actually. It's absolutely bitterly cold here today. Bitterly cold. Anyone that hasn't got a coat on today doesn't own one. So Terry Lamb, he's kicked 46 goals from 78 attempts this season, has the opportunity to put Canterbury in front outside the right hand upright touch judges don't move flags go up and the Bulldogs hit the front they are the early leaders they lead Canberra by two points to nothing so it's Belcher with the restart down for Langmack he's touched it and all very nearly in the touch couldn't have been that was close Robin Thorne was just there to pick it up now Gillespie thrown to the ground by Meninga. Alchin ducks around the blind side from the dummy half roll. Got to the quarter line. Defence gets to him. Back Owen Meninga, the, the tacklers. Back again for Farrah. Charged down, picked up again by Canterbury. Langmack playing at 32 metres out. Mortimer got it back for Gillespie. He bumped off Lazarus, but uh, was pushed back. Lost the ball behind him, but now a little knock on was ruled. Well, it's indicative of the power of the tackling that's coming in. Gillespie, one of the neighbourhood strong men in the competition, couldn't hold the ball in that situation. They're really keen to tackle. Now, Ricky Stewart working the scrum, the scrum for the Raiders. And the penalty's gone to uh, Canberra. 
It looks like Mortimer's grasped him before the ball came out. That seems to be the way that it's gone. There he is, yes, he's got him in a headlock before the ball's even gone near him. So an opportunity for Meninga to find touch and put the Raiders right on the attack. Well, it has to be a differential penalty, of course, because it came from a scrum. So the Raiders through Lazarus now to mount their first serious challenge. Terrific defence from both sides coming in. He's lost the ball. The penalty has been called on to play it. An opportunity for Canberra now to even the scores. Yes, well, it gets uh, very, very congested here. There's arms and legs swinging and going around here. The ball has been dispossessed from the player. There's another Canterbury player fallen on it, as you'll see. <coughs> Tunks there on the top. Uh, Farrah uh, finally falls on it, but uh, the penalty's gone to Canberra because obviously the referee had called on him to play it. So to Gary Belchip, back to the quarter line and about 10 metres in from touch. Fabulous crowd here at Seaford. Plenty of colour. Everybody wrapped up against the cold. 71 goals from 102 attempts for Belchip. Well, we're looking at a record crowd of uh, 17,000, I think, is the record, and we're hoping to get some information about this one. What's the guessing? What's the betting, Graham? Can you say that it's over or under? Well, I think it, uh, for the Manly game here recently, we had 14 and a half or so, Rex, and I think this is bigger than that crowd. Yes, I agree with that. What about you, Ian? I'd agree with that. They're all mad. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Belcher. About to get a bit of blow, blood flow to the toes for this kick from wide out. Struck it pretty well. Perfect in fact. So the scoreline, Canterbury and Canberra, two all. The Raiders belt the meaty bites out of the Bulldogs, so it says there, Maurice. Very clever advertising. Now here are the Raiders. As Sam Backer playing his 100th first grade game for the club, takes it up. Ten metres inside the, Can the Canterbury line. And that's a very fine run from Walters. Takes it up towards the quarter line. A terrific game of football so far. Here's Stewart. Daly's kick down for Alchin. 10 metres out from his own line. Daly's chased him and got him. Now Mortimer running across field. Trying to straighten. Takes the tackle. 13 metres out from the Canterbury line. Good bumping run from Gillespie. Farrah's kick over Belch's head, maybe out on the fall it is yes well if it was it was just out, it was a pretty good kick really from the distance that he was going to gain from it, let's see how much it went out by it was only a little bit just a touch well, there you are. just outside, must have been half an inch or an inch in it yes let's have a look at these lower grade results, under 21's Canberra 24, Canterbury 8 reserves, Canberra 18 Canterbury 6 Canterbury 10, correction, Canterbury 10. The scrum's gone with the feed. Stewart ducks around the blind side. Mortimer holds him. Just outside the Canterbury quarter. Ferguson goes to dummy half. He'll run from there. Beats one again. Got to the quarter line. Beats another one. The crowd really love it when Johnny Ferguson takes the football. Now away goes Grant Ellis. Back for Stewart. Now Daly again, cutting out Meninga with a pass to Walters. On it goes to the winger in Paul Martin. Into touch there goes Martin. Yes, good defence coming across there. Plenty of it too. Andrew Farrow was the man that was covering behind his centre. See him come across on the wing and take it. That's a real good tackle on the State Bank replay. <laughs> Mortimer's got it. Taken well out by Dean Lance. Now it's back for Curry. With the two second rowers, Ellis and Clyde, bring him down. Now Langmac. Caught by Ellis. Joe Thomas from dummy half. The Walters is around his ankles. Lazarus over the top. Back for Farrah again. 
Belcher across to try and get this one, but it's too good for him. Well, that's uh, a beautiful kick, that one, and Farrah's pretty pleased with it too. It just has enough impetus to go over the sideline and stop about a foot over the line. That's perfect judgment. Just look at that. One, two, three, the little bounce to the right. There she looks. Very important, Ian, about the Canterbury kicking game. They're trying to keep the ball away from both Belcher and Ferguson. They're finding that angle in between the two, and they're kicking on early tackles instead of, instead of waiting late in the six. Stewart works the scrum for the Raiders. It's gone with the feed. Belcher up into the... Uh, to take the first pass. But good defence on him. That was Alchin up there. Now Stewart and Daly. Daly looking for the line. It's going to be a good kick. It's going to find touch. And that's a beautiful kick from Daly. Magnificent effort. Yes, well, it's tit for tattle on this occasion. Daly comes up with a beautiful kick. He's pretty enthusiastic to chase because he doesn't quite think it's going to go out. It just beats him over the sideline. State Bank replay once again. Well, they, they didn't want that ball to beat Martin out. Martin was on the chase there, and Alsham was caught out of position. Well, now it's O'Brien getting it on to uh, Lamb, and now a high pass for Farrah. Daly lines him up. Daly's hung on to him. Just short of the halfway mark, Alsham. Now Gillespie, he's flying around the ankles, he lost the ball Gillespie. Well he's having something to say about it but there's a little argument about it. <coughs> Watch him get to his feet now. And there she goes. Well it was taken out of his hands. Well a little bit of a knock but a first grade footballer's got to cop that. That's and, the way and, it is. And the penalty for some justice. Well we'll agree to disagree. For sure. Okay, Stewart feeds the scrum. It's gone with the feed again. Here's Belcher up to take the first pass once more. He got away from two. But now runs into, the, into trouble. Just five metres short of halfway. Penalty again to the Raiders. Canterbury up inside the five metres. So Canterbury giving away quite a few penalties. Only a little bit too keen. Oh, look at the size of Mal Meninga playing in the centres. He must be 17 stone if he's a, an ounce and not real slow. <laughs> he's a formidable looking opponent. Coming into his own in this area now. Four straight penalties for Canberra too. Clyde hit heavily by three Canterbury defenders. The dummy from Walters not accepted by folks. Lance for Stewart. Dummy. Now they look for Meninga. He was standing pretty flat when he took that ball. He wasn't coming from very deep. Ellis takes it. Runs strongly. Straight into touch. Bounces off. Puts back out into the clear. Out for Ferguson. He beats Mortimer. Pass now for the try. Well, great try to Johnny Ferguson. He and Sam Bacco linking on that short line side. Yes, a marvellous bit of football there by Bacco to be able to create this gap. But Ellis did very well to get to that point. He offloaded well. Now watch Bacco go. He get, draws the flies to him. Gets a one-handed pass away to Ferguson, who came inside Steve Mortimer and threw Alchin and scores a very good try again. Now it's Ellis here. Watch it the way he can offload the football here, even though he's uh, been tackled. On to Bacco. Bacco gets a one-handed pass away as they come to him. Ferguson steps easily inside Steve Mortimer and then with a the power and pace goes over the Elchin tackle. A good one. I'm just a bit concerned about the number of shoulder charges going on on the Canterbury forwards. They're not apparently uh, committed to tackling with their arms. They just want to bury the shoulder in. What's your opinion? Those shoulder charges are fine. If they can come in, they've got to put the man down, though. You go missing in that sort of situation and you leave players open like Bacco was found. Plenty of time being taken. The concentration here from Belcher. Strikes it well. Just to the side of the post. So Canberra now with the lead. 6-2 over Canterbury. Scrum again has gone with the feed. Lamb has it now. Alchin. 
Making a lot of ground, Alchem. He's in fact, he's up to halfway. He's got Meninga chasing him. Looks for O'Brien, but Meninga takes him from behind. But a fine run from Jason Alchem. Puts all Bulldogs right on the attack. Curry across to Langmack. Long floater for uh, Farrah. Back to Thomas. Now to Mortimer. Good stuff from Canterbury as uh, Curry has it. The floater out for Alchem. Stepping, coming back inside. Beautiful tackle though. Put down by Clyde, 11 metres out, the Bulldogs on the charge, Langmack. Caught again by Clyde. Thomas and Mortimer. Cut out pass, finds Farrah, steps inside, got to the 10 metre mark, still made a few more metres. Only 8 metres out now, Thomas from dummy half, got it away to Dunn. Last tackle now for Canterbury. Tunks has it, a little kick ahead, but taken by Meninga. Knocked on by Meninga, but he did enough to save. Yes, it was uh, not a bad little kick by Tunks. He forced the error from Mal Meninga. The State Bank replay shows that clearly. Now we've got a touch judge in at the moment. He's going to be uh, calling out... Uh, it looks as though he's calling out number two, Martin, there for uh, the Canberra side. That was Martin's interference on Steve O'Brien when the long run came for Jason Alsh. And O'Brien was trying to to get there and support uh, Alshin and Martin was the man that held him back. So Mortimer gets the feed and puts the Bulldogs on the attack again as it goes with the feed. Lamb gets it to Alshin again. Alshin turns it back inside for Lamb. Ten metres out, caught from behind Lamb and knocked on. Good defence that time from, Can from Canberra. Lamb gets up we're not very happy about that situation. He's still having something to say about it. Well now, uh, Tunks has been called out. I suggest there's something uh, Gillespie being told to shut up there by the referee. Now that uh, should be a wink, should be enough to a, a blind man there. He's been told a couple of times to cool it. Well, Stewart comes up with it from the scrum. Caught well though by Lamb. Canberra under some pressure. This will uh, relieve it a little as Clyde skirts wide. Six points to two. Canberra lead Canterbury, but the Raiders under all sorts of pressure. Now, Bacco has it. Bacco beat one and got to the quarter line. Still able to stand. Can't offload. He's a strong man. He's lost the ball now. Play on, said referee McCallum. Thomas has picked it up. Switch of play for Gillespie. Gillespie through the quarter line. Tries to get around Meninga. Gets it away to O'Brien. O'Brien caught by Martin. 11 metres out now from the Raiders line. As Canterbury swing it wide again as Langmack has it. Now Mortimer, got it away to Folks. Caught though by Lance. Ten metres away from the line. Mortimer again, a cutout pass finds Lamb. Caught by Daly, flicked an intercept. No, it's not intercepted, picked up by Thomas. Thomas will play it. Done. Charges straight ahead. And got to within five metres of the line. That's the last tackle again for Canterbury. Very exciting passage of play. Mortimer, the little kick ahead. Belcher is there to pick it up. We'll get back into the field of play only just, but he's there. Well, great attack and great defence coming from both sides. Stewart plays it. Belcher is dummy half. Now Lazarus standing a little, uh, a little shallow that time. It is enough to bring him to about 13 metres out from his own line. Away goes uh, Ellis. Ellis almost breaks himself free. Took it over the quarter line. Back for Meninga. Alchin is there for it. So is Robin Thorne. In fact, it's Thorne who'll get it on his own quarter line and bring it back. One of defenders there too. Good chasing from Kevin Walters. And turn Canterbury around. Mortimer looking for a quick spread out to Farrah. He'll take on Lance, and also Lazarus beats them. Couldn't keep his feet, he was through. There was no cover defence too. Mortimer, out of dummy half. Dummy his way through. Pass for Langmack, now Alshin. Looks for Curry. Steps back inside, can't beat Facco. Slam to the ground. Thomas. Difficult pass for Lamb, he's going to pour it a knock on. on high, not near where we are, hope he's warmer. 
Well, the penalty's gone to Canberra. And Phil Gould, who has to uh, sit out in the open. I'm not showing any emotion. No. <laughs> You know, the winner of this game must have a terrific psychological boost in the semi-finals. I mean, both teams are, are just about certain to be there. And uh, a, a win here from either side must give them a terrific boost. Well, I don't know about both sides. I, I think a, the side that loses today can find themselves in a whole heap of trouble. Yeah, I suppose uh, it's so close, isn't it? Anything can happen. I reckon they'll both be there. Now, Canberra attacking position as Clyde runs strongly onto the football and gets to about 11 metres out from the Canterbury line. Perfect field position now for the Raiders. They can put something on. It's back with Stewart to uh, Laurie. Laurie Daly. Walters. Getting it away to Ellis on the 10 metre line. Crowd urging the Raiders on. Meninga on the blind side, the little kick ahead. Oh, Ultra has made a mess of it. Oh dear, oh dear, a near thing there for Canterbury. She said it was a moment of truth there for uh, the Canterbury side when Alchin put that one down and fortunately O'Brien was able to get there too. But uh, that was a real moment of truth. The State Bank replay caught it beautifully. So the Bulldogs under plenty of pressure as Canberra have been in the last 10 minutes or so. Uh, just about even, 8-6, Canberra have made a couple more, but a very even game of football. Just listen to this chant come up as they get six more tackles. Now Belcher, what a game he had last Friday night, they'll be uh, really trying to keep him in check and they're kicking away from him on every occasion, Stewart's got it across to Laurie Daly, now to Walters, who dummied back to Daly, and still going Walters, and he's a little man but must be very strong. Dean Lance. Again, the Raiders find themselves in a perfect position to put something on. Stewart, Daly, out of one Daly, into the clear, Laurie Daly, puts the support now, it wasn't there, couldn't get the pass away. Daly will play it, only 12 metres out. Walters from dummy half, links up with Clyde, Clyde got it back to Walters to Pulcher, Belcher one hands it back to Bacco, Bacco off the ground, almost back to Walters, Walters is caught, can't get it away. Last tackle now for the Raiders. It's across to Stewart. Stewart steps, Stewart goes down, scores. And throws the ball high in the air with delight. Ricky Stewart in there for Canberra. Yeah, no more important try will come to Ricky Stewart. He sights an opening here and bolts. That's good. There's a real, uh, that's two uh, tries that Steve Mortimer has been instrumental in allowing in a way because he's been wrong footed on two occasions once by Ferguson and now this time by Stewart he might score other tries in his career but that's a very very good uh, start to his rugby league career he's had a fine game so far Ricky Stewart in there as a replacement for Ivan Henjak as he was last Friday night improving with every game and Belcher has this uh, position for a very easy kick for him missed with just the one it's placed just about oh, a couple of meters to the right hand side of the upright picture of concentration no matter how close it is to the post Belcher moves into it puts it right between the posts and so the Canberra Raiders surge further in front it's 12 points to two Terry Lamb back to halfway as the chant for the Raiders continues right around this secret ground they're playing very solid football in this first half Stewart the try scorer back for Meninga to get up some room to move and charge straight into the defence Now for Lazarus, making very few mistakes, Canberra. Canterbury on the wrong side of the referee in a number of penalties. Lance finds a little half gap for himself. Canterbury again looking for the shoulder charge and they went missing. Walters out of dummy half. 
good passage of play for them from the kickoff they've managed to bring the ball back to 40 meters out from the canterbury line stewart looks for the angle for touch in behind steve o'brien the ball just sits up for him bonnie a chase is down there bill this is a very impressive first half for canberra it is, Graham. The, the unsung heroes are their pack of forwards that are doing a lot of work. They're tackling well, they're taking the ball forward, laying a good platform for their backs, and I think they deserve a lot of the credit for the position that the, uh, the Greens are in at the moment. A situation where if Canterbury aren't the next scorers, they're gone? Well, just, just about. There are a few minutes to go before half-time, and I'm sure Phil Gould would rest a lot easier if the, uh, if the Bulldogs could get points on the board. All right, O'Brien now. Langmack run around with Mortimer, dummying for his forwards, out through the back line for Terry Lamb, for Curry, long pass out for Farah. Well, he's, they're going to lose yardage yet again in that little passage, Alshon. This defence is just swarming in on Canterbury and they can't find an answer. Langmack trying to use some skills on the edge of the ruck, he does so for Gillespie. He's not got any support from the backs though. He was left alone. There should have been somebody there. They go back the other way through Mortimer. Long pass. Tunks let it bounce. Everybody's let it bounce. Barra's finally got it. Rushes off Kevin Walters. <laughs> Rushes off Dean Lance. He has support inside in Lamb. Lamb's got Robin Thorne. This is a terrific try. From some sloppy play. Thorne's going to plant it right under the black dot. Against the run of play, yes, but... That's the reply Canterbury's been searching for. Yes, a first-class try here. There was a dreadful pass run that Farrah had to field and bounce along the ground for about 10 yards. He dispossessed himself of Clyde, then went Dean Lance. He moved up the sideline. I wasn't surprised to see Terry Lamb on the inside of him. He's always there. And then Thorne came at the last, and Lamb offloaded perfectly for Thorne to go around and score underneath the post. And a very, very good try. And this pass from Mortimer goes all along the ground. Lamb did well to let it go. It bounced up fortuitously for Farrah. He does very good work. It dispossessed himself there of Walters. There's Dean Lance. He pushes him off. That's a very strong run from the big centre. He's a useful player, very highly professional. Terry Lamb loomed up, and then Thorne looms up again on the inside to really uh, cover the uh, cover defence and really get uh, himself into a good position to score a fine try underneath the uprights. Robin Thorne and Terry Lamb successful with his first attempt. They've obviously been practising that move of training. Maybe not the sloppy passes along the ground, but they got the desired end result from right in front. So this game, very, very tight once more at Seaford. Canberra 12, Canterbury 8. Belcher brings it back as Canberra, both sides, get a chance at a rest from that kick at goal for Lamb. There's the siren. And what a great first half of rugby league. They'll go to the break, leading by the four points, the Raiders. Yes, a first-class half of football, really a great uh, half. We've had everything in it. Uh, mighty defence, some very good open play, some good running play and some skills. Canberra's tries came from Ferguson and Stewart. Goals to Belcher, two from three. Canterbury scored their only try just a second or two ago before the halftime break. It came to Thorne after great lead-up work from Farrah and Lamb. And Lamb has been successful with two from two. I'm sure you'll agree we've got a really great game of rugby league on our hands. Don't go away. Come back with us when we come back to give you the second half. Welcome back to uh, Seaford Oval in Kukukuimbi and look at that in the background. Snow clouds arriving, heading this way and everybody knows it. Oh, put another log on the fire, Rex. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. And what a game of football we've got here. Terrific game with the Canberra leading Canterbury by 12 points to eight. We have one change in the Canterbury side with Glenn Nissen on for Steve O'Brien. Bill Anderson has been in the dressing room. What do you have to report, Bill? Well, Phil Gould wasn't unhappy with the way his side had gone. He feels that wind has picked up and he wants them to use it. Now, it'll be going to the Raiders' right-hand side, most of the Canterbury kicks, and he wants them to maintain their intensity. Timmy Sheen's felt that his side's just got to keep defending the way they are, but an interesting thing, he wants them to keep playing the ball very quickly. He believes that Canterbury are going to give away a lot of penalties like they did in that first half by trying to hold them down and to play the balls. Bill Anderson reporting from the rooms and we're underway with the second half. We'll check the first half tackles and then very even it is. Canberra have made 80, Canberra 85. 
Cam Canberra 80, Canterbury 85. Ellis and Clyde, the best for Canberra and folks and done for the Bulldogs. And Canberra in possession just on their quarter line. Dean Lance up and down. Picked up by Gillespie. 16,402 people here today, just under that ground record. 16,000 very hardy souls. Jason Alchin. In all sorts of bother as three Raiders are there to pull him down. And listen, 35 out. Mortimer for that line sends Ferguson back for it Belcher's coming across Ferguson will get there I think oh the ball's going to beat him well it took a terrible bounce as far as Ferguson is concerned a great bounce for Mortimer yes a great kick to start the second half for the Canterbury side and get them back into a good scoring position providing they can win the ball but that's a fine kick isn't it that's going to about 55 yards the scrum down about uh, 15 out from the Canberra line. The penalty's gone to uh, Canterbury. Well, I would think so. There's about half a dozen of the Canberra side on the ground. Walder's the last one to get up. So the differential to the Bulldogs. Gives them a great opportunity to uh, put on some attack at the start of this second half. Well, he kicks slightly backwards then to broaden the, uh, the depth of uh, attack they've got. Well, Steve Mortimer with the restart. Dummies to about three or four forwards and finally got it to Langmack. Langmack put Gillespie in the clear. Gillespie's going to score. He plants the ball down and the Bulldogs come back. A set move that worked to perfection. Well, I've got to be honest and say I snuck into the Canterbury dressing room to uh, use the toilet and I heard a Phil Gould talking about that move, that move, and that's the movie impressed on them. I didn't go in there intentionally, but I heard uh, Gould lie on this move. He had Mortimer running, throwing dummies to different people, and then he got away to Langmack, and then on to Gillespie. And look at the big boy power his way through. There's no way in the wide world they're going to stop him. He's seen the line, and he's going to get there, and that's it. Bang! And down she goes. And here again, have a look at him. He's dummied to three of the forwards, Given it to Langmack. Langmack with his noted ball skills is able to evade the tackles there and finally put the ball down very strongly for a great Canterbury comeback. What a great start to the second half for the Bulldogs. Scored in a very handy position for Terry Lamb who's kicked uh, both of his shots for goal so far today. This one's only a couple of metres from the left hand upright. Mistake and the Bulldogs hit the front. It's Canterbury Bankstown now 14 and Canberra 12. Canterbury turning it around 14 12 they lead. As we wait for the football to come back for Steve Walters. Daly, Lance, Meninga on the fringe, brushes off Barrett, runs out of territory, saw the sideline coming, put the brakes on. Lance called Ferguson around him, didn't use him. Thrown to the ground by Folks, who's got through a ton of work for Canterbury. Lazarus on the charge and a short gap opened up for him. Stewart's called for the ball. Backo went without it. Daly with the kick. It's going to sit up and just bounce right into the arms of Alshon. Runs away from Daly. Saw Sam Backo coming. Who could blame him? Went the other way. Mortimer in a dummy half. He and Alshon have run from there on a number of occasions. Nissen. Langmack calling up some runners. Tux answers the call. This pace really just not even slackening. Mortimer. Gillespie, who's played well. Thomas. And again, they look for Farrah. Didn't kick, used the option out for Curry. Back in field it goes for Nissen. Ferguson's there. So's Bacco. Now it's the last tackle. So again, that little touch of variety and not kicking when they were expected to. Short ball. Lamb was hit high. 
across the chest, said McCallum. We'll see it again. I think it was a high tackle. Steve uh, Lamb was uh, rather knocked over very high, I thought, by Mal Meninga. You uh, see whether you agree with it or not. The arm was only put out. It wasn't a swinging arm, but it was across the lower part of the face. McCallum's called for this to come back. Lamb's OK. And it's a Canberra ball. Daly. Now Stewart screaming out instructions to his forwards to break from that scrum. He just ducks under a tackle himself. Tremendous pace, Ann. I can't remember a game this year that's been played uh, consistently at this pace. Right from the start. Now, Clyde. It's 10 metres from the halfway mark. Buster Stewart. Now Meninga. Bailey, out for Martin. Last tackle now for Canberra. Meninga has it. His kick. He's not going to find touch. Robin Thorne brings it back. Lance has missed him. Thorne got to the quarter line, tries to link up with Nissen. Does so. Daly's chasing him. Daly's got him. Nissen will play at about 12 metres from the halfway mark. Here's Mortimer. Mortimer in a half gap. Caught by Daly. Now Dunn. Dunn is caught by Walters and Backo, but still struggles to make that 10 metre mark. Now it's back for Langmac. And Gillespie. Gillespie skirting wide. Daly's got him. Walters as well. Gillespie having a fine game for his side today. Here's Langmac. Able to offload back for Alchin. Now Gillespie again to the quarter line. Links up with Nissen. But Nissen did very well to stay in the field of play. I'll say he did. No room to work here on the side. Here's Alchin getting it on to Mortimer. Now Lamb. Lamb thought he saw a gap. Comes back the other way. Back for Mortimer. Mortimer's put the bomb in the air. Where's Belcher? He's right underneath the goalpost. Up they go for it. It's anybody's ball. Belcher comes up with it for Canterbury. And for Canberra at least. And made it up to about 12 metres from his own line. Plenty of pressure for the Raiders. Here's Martin. Martin going strongly up to halfway. What a game of football this is from one end of the field to the other. A couple of very valuable tackles by Tony Curry in the last 30 seconds. They've stopped the... Uh, Raiders from getting further of a move on, another one just before then. Well, mix up here in the knock-on, it'll be picked up by Canterbury, Gillespie's picked it up, playing the advantage, Nissen's got it, Nissen has locked the ball behind him, Walters has come up with it for Gamba. Well, it just never stops, does it? Now Dean Lance, We've got a Canberra player down, in back play injured, Walters it is, here's Ellis taking it up strongly. The body contact in this game is ferocious. Clyde is the player down injured. Laurie Daly got it on to Meninga. Tried to get around Lamb. Turned it back inside for Belcher. Belcher's caught. Got support there from Daly. Daly's to the halfway mark. Still stepping. Takes the tackle now. Just inside the Cam Canterbury half. Stewart. Last tackle signal for the Raiders. Back out. Got it back for Meninga. Out there for Belcher, quick hands on to Martin. Martin up to the quarter line, still stepping. Good run from the winger. Look for support, couldn't get the pass away. And that's a turnover. Clyde's in trouble there, and he's going to go to the head bin. Who's going to be his replacement, Bill? Brent taught him his first game back after suffering that broken arm. He's the, he's the Kiwi international, and he'll be going onto the field. Brent Todd coming out now, the uh, Kiwi. Big tough forward front rower. A good welcome back for him playing in this game by Craigie. Now the Bulldogs have it with Dunn taking it up. Lost the ball. Backo's picked it up. Got it away to Lance. Lance up to the quarter line. I need a quick play the ball now the Raiders. Backo's dummy half. He's going to run from there himself. Dunn's got him. Nothing in this game. 14 to 12. Canterbury just to have their nose in front. Now here's Todd for that pass. Well, I thought it might have been forward, but Canterbury have been ruled offside. 
Well, he would give two points for the Raiders. Well, that's an interesting one. They might have got been caught out here on a stutter in the play of the ball. Yes, the play of the ball was a little bit slow. I thought Lance Todd was fractionally in front of the dummy half, actually. But uh, he's caught Langmack there for uh, offside and the uh, ruck. And this is a pretty simple kick here that uh, could even the scores up. It's 14-12 in uh, Canterbury-Bankstown's favour at the moment. Now, Belcher, what a vital kick this is. This could level the scores. And he's done just that. We've got a game that's all tied up here at Queen Bear. All in all, Canberra and Canterbury. Timmy Sheens on the phone with some instructions to the sideline as this game's back to square one. The champ goes up again for the Raiders. Smiles from Phil Gould. He might know something we don't. Terry Lamb. Very deep kickoff from the restart. Well, a major mistake from Paul Martin. Incredible mistake from the kickoff to give Canterbury an advantage. State Bank replay shows a player, a quality player, under no pressure at all, knocking on. That shows you what pressure can do. When you've got a tied situation in a match like this, the young bloke was probably just not concentrating on the football enough. So Canterbury to get the ball back from the line dropout. Bill, a lot, a lot of time left in this game. Would you, if you were Peter Tunks, head this Canterbury side towards the post and just grab the one point? Well, it's one of the things you'd have to be considering at this stage, even though there are still over 20 minutes to go. But, Graham, the result of this one, because of the frantic pace it's been played at, is going to be determined by the side that can simply control possession best in the rest of this second half. If you've got most of the ball, you're going to win this one because the other side's just going to run out of petrol. Well, they seem to be heading that way very quickly. Here's, here goes Lamb. Took all the time in the world. Very, very professionally done by Canterbury just to gain that advantage. Didn't miss about at all. Terry Lamb, calm, collected, cool as you please. Watch out where it goes. Virtually over the green dot, not the black dot in this case, and curves away to the left. That's a fine field goal. Puts them in front, 15-14. Canterbury lead. The old, old saying that one point will get you two. Peter Tunks and Paul Dunn on the 10 metre line with their hands in the air trying to take the attention away from Belcher from the kickoff. Nissen been heavily involved since he's come on as a replacement. Ooh, ducked under a tackle from Lance. Had the ball jolted out by Meninga. Luckily for Canterbury, Mortimer was there to catch it. Feeling of short legs, Steve Mortimer. Thomas. Taps the ball, goes straight ahead. He didn't have a marker. There's nobody there at all. Back it goes for Dunn. He has support. Out it goes for Curry. Dragged it in. He's got support in Thorne from the corner. Steps inside Belcher. Great cover defence from Meninga. Amazing for Meninga to get across there in cover. He kicks at it in the play of the ball. Six more tackles for Canterbury. On the rack of Canberra. Trying a goal would really put the cat amongst the pigeons here. Done. Eight metres out the Bulldogs. Desperation stakes for Canberra. Lamb. Had to go back for the pass. Does a 360 degree turn. Goes straight through. Has support for Alshon. Can't link with him. Five metres out now Canterbury. Mortimer's called for it. Dummy back inside. It goes for Farah. The defence holds. Gillespie in a dummy half. Out it goes for folks. He's got support for this and it's a try. They hung on and hung on Canberra, but it's a celebration for the Bulldogs. And it all started with that long run from Thomas. Here's Gillespie, a dummy half, played an important role, got a good pass away to Folks, and Folks just took the tackle and gave it straight to Nissen. It was a finely contrived try. I thought Steve Mortimer involved in something around here, but I've watched uh, as this young fella, Gillespie, does the right thing to Folks, and Folks just offloaded beautifully out to Nissen. Again, we see it from head on. There's a good pass onto Folks, who doesn't try to make ground, just takes the tackle and gives the pass to Nissen who's in a much more advantageous position than him. So that's really, maybe, a put the cat among the pigeons. We'll see. Do the Canberra fans leave at this stage? What's happening? 
Dean Lance, have a look at him. Screaming out to his side. They went in at the break, leading by four points. Now in one very big hole in the second half. But this kick for Terry Lamb to give us a difference in the scoreline of seven points, forcing Canberra to score three times. Listen to the crowd. Lamb, well, he's pushed it well away. Right from the boot, it was never going to be there. Canterbury now lead, 19-14. Well, Tunks and Dunn have their hands in the air trying to distract Belcher's restart. Didn't have any effect, though, on the kick. This one's picked it up for Canterbury. Canterbury have the lead, but there's only five points in it. Thomas. Change getting ready in the uh, Canberra side. Yes, and Wayne Collins has just got onto the field. The player that's exited is Kerrod Walters, the hooker. Now, Tunks. There he is. Now for Belcher. Belcher's beaten one. Out for Ferguson now. Ferguson. Gee, he's elusive, isn't he? Just amazing. Played it forward. He's going to make another 10 metres. Maybe a little more. They'll get the penalty. Yes, it'd be interesting to see this one if we've got a close-up shot of it because it's uh, one of those situations I've half a suspicion that uh, the uh, Ferguson was doing a bit of holding too. Well, Thomas was the man on the bottom. He was the, uh, the one judge guilty, but uh, I'm not necessarily sure the referee wasn't conned on that occasion. Now, here comes Brent Todd. Nice welcome back to football in this game. Yes, he seems to have put on a bit of weight too. Uh, or it looks a little bit softer, but uh, that's to be expected. Back out in the midfield. Collins is dummy half. Way to Stewart. Now Collins made about uh, three or four metres from the dummy half position. It's for Stewart. Now it's for Meninga. Then on to Belcher. Belcher's wrapped up there by Farrer. Last tackle for uh, Canberra as Meninga puts this one in the air right in the goal mouth area. And they're pouring through after Daly's there to take it. The ball is loose. But the he's penalty offside. effort, yeah, he's offside and the penalty's been given to uh, Canberra. Curry knew he was offside immediately, but he really had no option. He had to take the football because the, the, uh, the two that went for it, the uh, pullback, Jason Orchard and another player, Thorn, I think it was, were obviously not going to get anywhere near it. It ricocheted away from them. So he took the odds to the uh, the two points, and uh, that's the way it was. A professional foul that he knew he'd created. I don't think he's going to get the stick, the stick from anyone in his team because he probably saved them six points. Yeah. <laughs> As it is, they've given Belcher the opportunity to add to that tally of three from four. And this is probably from an identical position. He kicked one just a little earlier. Belcher takes the same amount of time over a kick from 10 yards out as he does from 50 yards out if he goes for one from 50 because he's a very meticulous type of a kicker. Everything's got to be right, including the frame of mind and the breathing. I just hope that his feet are warmer than mine trying to kick a football. Belcher with an attempt to breach the gap. Deliberately slow and moves in and pilots it between the sticks. So the Raiders reach that gap. Three points in it. Canterbury 19, Canberra 16. Alston trying to take some pressure off his forwards now, just running from dummy half. They've got to remember the words of Bill Gould at halftime. Bill Anderson reminded them, didn't you, Bill, that the fact that they've got to go back to the kick. Well, that's what they had to do, was to use the kicking game. There's a reasonably strong breeze behind them now, and you can see Farrah making the most of it. I think that Canterbury have been superior in the kicking department, and those territorial gains could very well add up in the end. Well, this is a superb kick. It's not going to go dead. Plenty of defenders down there for Canterbury and Canberra Court. Five metres out from their line. 
Their forwards are still very, very slow in getting back. Ferguson keeps it alive for Belcher and Daly. Trying to run it from their own line. 19-16. Three points in this great class between the joint competition leaders. Lance now trying to get them started. Canterbury with Michael Hagen on the sideline warming up. Steve Mortimer is the player that will be coming from the field and Hagen the man going on. Interesting change from Gould. Mortimer the man to come up. Stewart goes for the kick again, but again it's straight to Alston who will bring it back with great joy to try and set up another Canterbury raid. Yes, they kicked straight to him on a number of occasions, haven't they? And Alchon now playing it. Now Tunks. We've got Bellamy getting ready to go on for the Canberra side shortly. Now Mortimer, a pass which has uh, been allowed to bounce. Curry has it. Curry carries to the quarter line. He's in the clean, Curry. Only Belcher to beat. He'll beat Belcher and he'll score. Great determined run from Tony Curry. A try which could well wrap up this game for Canterbury. Yes, it was beautiful. It may be the last touch for Steve Mortimer, but he's done it again. Although he was tackled, he's still got to pass away. It went along the ground to Curry. Now watch the footwork of this Australian player. He stops uh, Walters dead in his tracks with a little in and away, a little shuffle. Shows the ball beautifully on the inside to Martin and then accelerates and goes right through the tackle there. And you'll see him come up with a very strong dive to get away from uh, Belcher. It's a really good try, no doubt about it. Mortimer gets that rather sloppy looking pass away, but it was given to probably one of the men on the field who was most equipped to handle a little bit of space. He handled it beautifully, he's exceptionally fast, and uh, really he's done all the task of him there with a first class try. I don't think Belcher really had a, a hope or prayer from the time that uh, the pass was thrown. Well, Tony Curry, who has uh, made it public that he's returning to Brisbane next year, certainly proof that uh, He's a real professional because his effort for Canterbury has been great. Now, here comes Mortimer from the field. I had my eye on Mortimer before when that try was scored. He grabbed out there again, just noting to the sideline that maybe he stretched his groin. Backo off. Well, Sam Backo has been replaced. Is that right, Bill? Yes, Gary Coyne in 26 has taken his place. I'm really not surprised at that, you know, because Sam Backo has gone missing a few times the second half. Well, no, all through the game, really, he's not been a, a force to be really reckoned with. I think his work rate has been a little bit abysmal today. I think Sam needs to take a look at himself. Terry Lamb's conversion attempt is going to be flagged away. But uh, that's a very handy lead for Canterbury. It's 23 to 16. Now Meninga restarts. Good heavens above. Well, that's not the sun that's up here, is it? The sun is out. I think it is. We've got a, a burst of brilliant sunshine here at Canberra, which is... <laughs> that's the sun, Bill Anderson, in case you don't know. Well, the sun might have come out, but I think the sun is setting on the Canberra side today anyway. Brilliant sunshine, but no warmth. Another change, Bill? Yes, Tony Curry will be coming from the field, and number 18, Sandy Campbell, to go on. OK. Now, here's Tunks. What a terrific game of football this has been. It really has. Credit to both sides. Farrah, whose kicking game has been spot on. This time it's been, been fielded pretty well by Johnny Ferguson. Now Stewart got it under Belcher. And Bellamy. Oh, good tackle. Terry Lamb. Todd. Can't beat the uh, defence of Tunks. Now Coin. Look at the defence on from Canberra, from Canterbury. Yeah, Gillespie's still going at a great rate. He just seems to be a bit of a masochist about the way he likes to get into these uh, Canberra defenders, uh, attackers rather, and knock them about. Well, it's been touched by Canterbury, and Meninga has it. The tackle count restarts. Dean Lance is linked up with Daly, but Daly caught magnificently around the ankles by Terry Lamb. Back for Daly again. Got himself free and almost to the halfway mark. Now here's Lazarus. Inside Canterbury's territory. Meninga has it. A run around with Stewart. Linking up with uh, 
Good build, Jim. Coin. Last tackle signal now by referee Greg McCallum. Stewart. The kick straight out in the air. Loose and picked up by Coin, so Canberra get another six tackles. Just like a fortune. Sure is. Here's Todd taking it up strongly. 32 out from the uh, Canterbury line. Stewart. Dean Lance taking it straight up. Now Collins going from dummy half and getting to the quarter line. Meninga is dummy half this time. Got it away to Todd. Todd flicked it back for Belcher. Misunderstanding, but uh, last tackle signal. Canberra still have it. Uh, Stewart, wrong foot's done. He puts a kick that's gone straight up in the air. In fact, might have gone backwards a shade. Yes, it's gone backwards about two yards. Stewart has flicked it back, but it's been picked up by Canterbury. Terry Lamb, the man on the spot. A penalty finally comes for the Bulldogs. They're not getting off Lamb. Canterbury group there still chatting to each other, driving each other on. Well, some back chatting for McCallum now and some changes, Bill, on the sideline. Yes, James Donnelly be going on to take the place of Peter Tunks and Sandy Campbell is still trying to get on for Tony Curry. Campbell was motioning Curry to the sideline, but Curry had, didn't want anything of it. Still there. Now he's making his way to the sideline. Dunn hits the ball up. Curry coming off now. Pass went back to nobody. Folks decided to make it his. You really can't find a bad player in the Canterbury side, and for that matter, very few in the Canberra side. What an outstanding game of rugby league. Tunks. Coming in for a little bit of treatment. Thomas, just running the ball up. Are they setting themselves for another field goal? Malsham, Lamb. Little kick ahead for his outside backs, turning Ferguson around. The ball sits up. They're going to wrap him up right on the line. Well, there had to be a penalty. He was rolled over by Sandy Campbell. He was in the field of play. Yes, good refereeing there. Ferguson takes the ball. He's obviously going to end up in the field of play, but uh, Sandy Campbell rolls him over into the in-goal area, so the penalty had to come. Todd. Canella forward just to keep hitting it up through the forwards. Not enough time. They've got to spread it. And spread it very, very quickly. Stewart. Has played well for Canberra. Nearly right through. Bounces back to his feet. Passes out for Bellamy. The defence was up quickly on Meninga. Forced him to go back inside for Collins. But again, this Canterbury defence swarms in Langmack on this occasion. Ellis. It's all too easy, just this one out stuff. They've made the mistake. So is Gillespie. It'll come back to the original knock-on and it'll be a Canterbury put-in. Alshon in the halfback role. Wrapped up by Lance. Donnelly. Out quickly under a wall of defenders. Done. Certainly let selectors know again that he's about. Back out might be back and fit for the rest of the world class, but Dunn's after the spot. Thomas. Just tapped it and went ahead. McCallum said you're going to have a marker there in the shape of Brent Todd. Yes, this was just a case of uh, uh, the player that playing the ball forward, Thomas, being in error. The uh, marker had moved back in front of him just as he got to his feet, so the penalty had to go to Canberra. Easily inside the last couple of minutes as Daly goes for a short run on the blind side. Coin bounces off Gillespie, goes again. Now surely they'll look for the back line. Stewart. Quick pass for Meninga. 
He just stands and unloads for Collins. There's the siren. It's a terrific game of rugby league comes to a close. And an outstanding win for Canterbury. The race to the top of the Winfield Cup. A great performance from their forwards. They led the way all day long and set it up for the back line with a win that reads 23-16. The scorers have been Thorne, Gillespie, Nissen and Curry. Lamb, three goals plus a field goal. That's 23 points to, Canber uh, to Canterbury. Canberra, 16 points game from Ferguson and Stewart tries. And Belcher, four goals. 23-16, to 16, a first-class game of rugby league. I just wish we saw every weekend something as competitive as that. It was really fine. OK, I'll be back with the man of the match in just a moment. Amongst a host of great players, David Gillespie was our State Bank man of the match. David, you had to do it the hard way with a very slow start to the first half. Uh, mate, it was a great team effort. Uh, we were behind the eight ball at the start. When it was, uh, we were down 12-2, we, we showed a lot of uh, character to come back. And um, as I said, it was a great team effort. I was at the training at Belmore on Thursday night. The side put in a pretty impressive effort. Uh, you certainly took that from the paddock to here today. Uh, we, we come down last night ready for the game. We, um, we spent 24 hours there. We stayed in last night. That's all we... Uh, we drank and ate football all night and, and uh, it just come up winners for us today, mate. Also a planned move for a try for yourself? Oh, I don't score too many, mate. When they come, I, uh, I'll take them. All right, well, how about taking uh, this with both hands? $1,000 from the State Bank in the form of the State Saver Savings Account. Love to, mate. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, State Bank and uh, Channel 10. All right, well played. David Gillespie, our State Bank man of the match. Bill Anderson, as far as games go, they don't come much better than this one. They certainly don't, Graham. In the first 40 minutes today, Canberra made all of the running. But in the second half, the, Cam the Canterbury sustained forward play gradually started to wear them down. And as the Raiders felt the pressure, the Canterbury backs finished them off. Some terrific clashes in the forwards there. And of course, none more happier than their skipper in the Bulldogs ranks. Peter Tunks, uh, an incredible pace. Yeah, it was a very hard game, Graham. We, uh, we ran into wind purposely in the first half. But we knew we had to match them in the forwards. And uh, when we came in behind 12-8 at half time, we knew we were still in the game with a big show. What was on the players' mind? It must have been uh, very, very important there, the fact that the loser really isn't a bit of a bother now. Well, we, we understand that, uh, you know, a loss at this point of the season is, is really crucial, and uh, we had a big build-up to the game, and we knew that, uh, like I said, if we lost the game, we probably would have been in sixth spot, and uh, we intend to win today and keep going from here. Terrific performance from Canterbury and a terrific game of football, Phil Gould, and you must have worked hard on those set moves that resulted in two tries, eh? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's always nice. The boys work hard at those sort of things. Uh, you never really expect to come up with a try from them, but uh, today was good. We had a couple of work for us, and uh, it really went a long way towards the win. Still asking questions about Steve Mortimer? Well, uh, I think in the case of Steve Mortimer, he's had his best game and our most important game of the year. Uh, you know, ten weeks ago when we had the problem with his health, uh, we were set on a program. Uh, we handled our way despite a lot of criticism from a lot of people. And, uh, you know, I think our conditioner, Jimmy Chute, uh, deserves a big rap. I think our Dr Hugh Hazard deserves a big rap. And I think the club deserves a big rap because uh, all the criticism we've withstood and the, and the publicity we've had, uh, we've stuck to our program. Uh, Turvey's reaped the benefits of it. We've reaped the benefits of it. And, uh, you know... I just think we've done a good job. Well, congratulations, it's a great effort. Thank you. It was a terrific game of football to finish what has been another wonderful weekend of rugby league. Let's check the uh, results of the full round. And it all started Friday night with Penrith getting out of jail over Parramatta. They won it 14 to 10. Yesterday, Brisbane were easy winners over North 24 to 6. And today's results, Manly 10 must have struggled against Newcastle 2. Balmain had to battle against West. They won it 22-16. South 22, Illawarra 20. Now luck for the Steelers. Cronulla 24, East 6. St George 14, narrow winners over the Gold Coast 12 and our match here today, what a river it was, 23-16 Canterbury over Canberra. Now the competition table looks this way with three leaders, Penrith, Canterbury and Cronulla on top with 28 points and then the bank up with Canberra, Manly, Brisbane and Balmain all together on 26. At the head of the rest, Souths on 21 going right through to Wests on 7. Next week's matches, OK, let's look at them, Cronulla and Canberra, what a, a really important one that is for the uh, Canberra Raiders. Gold Coast against the Eastern Suburbs side, Newcastle take on Penrith, Parramatta against Brisbane, Norths versus Wests, Souths and St George, and our State Bank big game, Manly and Balmain. But it all kicks off on Friday night, Friday Night Football live from 7.30. Hope you join us for Canterbury, big winners today uh, against Illawarra, comes to you live at 7.30 from the Belmore Sports Ground. Well, a fantastic game of rugby league, Gio. I enjoyed every minute of that, 23-16 to the uh, Canterbury-Bankstown side. I hope if